Hi, it's Daniel with Scrapbook Maven. I'm going to do a tutorial today about how I bind and cover my mini albums. And I do recommend you check out YouTube and see all the um, other tutorials out there. Um, Kathy Order does a really nice one. Uh, Laura from Following the Paper Trail does one. Um, well, uh, Claire from My Creative Spirit, she does a nice one too. And I, I love those three ladies. And those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head and um, so from their tutorials I have um, combined them and messed so I will show you how I did my last couple albums that I shared with you guys so I was working on my romance novel mini album and I did do an, a tutorial on how I made the pages for it um, based on my An Eerie Tale mini album. So I'm going to make a binding and cover for that album. So what you're going to need is a scoreboard, a ruler, your bone folder. I like to use score tape. You can use any tape that you like. I've also just used regular wet adhesive and my albums have stayed and, and they're perfectly fine. My kids flip through the mini albums and no issues so far. Um, cardstock, of course, and um, chipboard for the cover. What I also like to use that I've gotten from, um, I think it was Kathy Order that I first saw it, uh, these envelopes from, from the post office. Um, they are really hard to rip and tear, so it's really nice to reinforce your binding and cover with it, and I'll show you in the tutorial how I use it exactly. So since I am going to use my interactive pocket page um, for the mini album that I'm doing this binding for, I have a piece of card stock and it is seven and a half by slightly under six. So I like it to fit nice and snug, but not too snug. So um, where it's going to bind is six inches on the page, so my binding is just slightly less than that, maybe um, an eighth of an inch less than six. And you can always trim it down if it um, is too big. So with that in mind, I have four pages that I'm going to attach to my mini album binding. And so I like a flap on each side. It's not an exact science um, how large my flaps are. As you I don't know if you can see, but I've already scored it and started working on it. And so um, it has a smaller flap on this side than this side, and it's not a big deal. And I've learned that I can't be a perfectionist when I do this, otherwise just freeze. I just don't end up doing anything. So I've just learned to just kind of go with the flow, and then it's a much more uh, fun process making the mini album than um, fussing about everything. I made it really easy and I have three eighths as the measurements that you're going to score at. You're going to score 12 times and that's to make binding um, flaps enough for four page mini album. So I'm just going to start at two inches and uh, um, start scoring. So I'll score and then I'll go over three eighths of an inch and I'll score again. And I've already pre-scored it, so I'm just going through the motions just to show you what I'm doing. And then I'll go over again another 3 eighths of an inch and score again. So that's my third score. Another 3 eighths of an inch, score again. Another 3 eighths, score again. Another 3 eighths, score again. Another 3 eighths, score, score. Score, 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 and the last score there. So you have 12 score marks for a four page mini album. And so what you're going to do is now fold on all the score marks. And I've already pre um, folded it and uh, burnished it. Oops. So you're going to want to have the first two go up to create 
a little, um, as you can see, I've already started it to try and make it go faster. Um, a little flap here that the page will attach to. And then you'll keep doing it like an accordion pretty much, folding it back and forth, back and forth, so that you get, fold it all the way like that, you get something that looks like this. So you have, um, or if you look at it like this, you have a little mountain, and when those come together, it creates that little flap that your page will mount on. And then you have a little valley or a little gusset that'll provide spacing in between your pages. And so if you can see that, you have four mountains for each page. And then what I like to do, as you can see here, is I like to cut out a piece of the um, envelope, mailing envelope, and I attach it to the back from, I mean, you can attach it to the whole back. I just make sure to go past the mountain a little bit on each side. So I have it from here to here so that when where it'll bend for the um, cover there's some some of this here and it I like to think that it it makes it more sturdy more durable so that as you're flipping pages and it's bending over and over again it makes it harder for it to tear and, and uh, ruin your mini album so I've attached the envelope piece to the back and I've also and then I did that with score tape and I've also put some score tape along one side of each mountain so so we have a mountain here and on the inside I've attached some score tape so each mountain and on the left side I've attached some score tape so I'm going to remove the score tape and just fold it and create my permanent little hinges. Because I can do it one at a time. So I have my little mountain. I'm going to squeeze them shut. Oops. And so I have one little hinge ready for a pocket uh, pocket page. So I'll do this other one that I've already taken the tape off. Move this out of the way. So we have our second little hinge. And the envelope, adding the envelope with the extra tape, it does make it a thick um, hinge, but I like it. I feel like it makes it, it seems really sturdy like that. So I'll just continue. And if you have more pages than four, you have five, then you just make your cardstock a little bit longer and do a few more score lines to make more hinges. And this is our last one. And so there we have our little hinge system. So as you can see, this flap is smaller, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you just fold it back and forth. To make sure it's nice and flexible. And so, what I like to do is get the base papers on first before I start attaching my pages. But what you would do is add um, some score tape, and this is the 1 8 inch score tape. Uh, excuse me, not 1 8 <laughs> 1 quarter inch, which fits really nicely with this 3 8 inch hinge. 
So all what I do is I just add some score tape to each side of the hinge, like this. And like I said, um, or I don't know if I said it, but I have used wet glue to do this. And my mini album is working just fine, still strong, going strong. My kids like to flip through the mini albums that their pictures are in, and it's, it's doing great. So if you don't have score tape and you just have wet adhesive, it'll work just fine too. So that's what you're going to do on each hinge you are going to put some score tape. And then of course you have this nice size gusset so you can add some embellishments without making your mini album um, like an alligator mouth um, because it's too thick. And then what you'll do is you'll add some score tape here, which uh, you'd want to do before you put your pages on, so I'm getting ahead of myself here. This is where score tape that's wider comes in handy. So you can cover more space quicker. So you're going to want to put score tape um, all over. If you have that nice thick two inch score tape, you can just you can get that done real quick. Um, I have the quarter inch, so I just put some here and I put some at the bottom. And I will put some through the middle here and maybe some wet adhesive where I don't have score tape. And you're just going to put it in your cover that you're going to make. And so how to make the cover is you're going to need, excuse me, some chipboard and so I've already started so you're not going to be bored to tears watching me do this and since my pages are six by six I have cut my chipboard six and a half by six and a half like I said I like to make it easy my spine to fit this binding for four pages is about two inches wide of course six and a half um, high by two inches. It's slightly off because for some reason I can't cut straight. So I kept having to trim it. So just slightly under two inches, but two inches is fine. It's very forgiving. It'll just mean you have a bigger gussets on the inside um, back and front covers, which is perfect if, if you like to add a lot of embellishments. So what I like to do is I have just started doing this is that I use the envelope um, again, I think it's called Tyvek. I've heard Kathy Order call it Tyvek. So you take this envelope material and you take a piece that's slightly taller than your um, binding or chipboard, I should say, and then long enough that when you put your pieces side by side that it, it covers the gap that you're going to have. And I like to do that just because it covers up the pointy corners of your of your chipboard. And um, I don't know. I like to think that it keeps it sturdy because cardstock is easily terrible, rippable. So this is nice. So what I do is I line my chipboard up and I like to use my grid on my mat that is in a different area. Um, or you can use your ruler and just line your chipboard pieces up. As you can see, it's not exactly perfect, but it always works out in the end. And then leave a gap that is about twice the thickness of your chipboard. So I do not have any next to me, but say this is your chipboard and I just placed a little two pieces of chipboard like this. Usually they're just scraps of chipboard I put in there. And so I leave about two widths of chipboard um, spacing in between each. And that allows it to bend easily without putting too much pressure on the cardstock when you bend it. And so what I've done is I've put some score tape 
along each side, like this here, and then this side, this side of the spine, and then this side of the cover. And I've placed it on the Tyvek, just how I want it. And then I've just, the excess, I've just put some uh, score tape along and just folded it over. So I didn't cut it perfectly, but it fits over nicely. And so there you have your binding pretty much done except for the cardstock. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've cut some cardstock to the size I need. And in order to do that, I've used um, some, what is it, eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And I've attached it here. I don't know if you can see, but I just used some score tape and attached it so it's longer and then cut it to size so that I have at least an inch or more margin all the way around. So that's how I'm going to do my cover. So just line it up as evenly as possible. And then where I like to put score tape, this is where I put the score tape for the um, Tyvek. I'll show you real quick. Wherever you'll have bending paper when you open and close your binding is where you definitely want to have adhesive. And I am frugal, so I don't put adhesive if anywhere where I don't need it. So this is approximately where I had all my score tape to attach my Tyvek to the back. So just like that. Get your little piece of Tyvek. And then um, what I kind of do is, like I said, put the ruler there and then put your pieces one at a time in place with the right spacing and then and fold over the excess like that. Hopefully that's not confusing. So that's how you would have the Tyvek and so you would have the same um, scoring on the other side to attach it to the um, cardstock and you'll want to do the same for the inside of your cover. So both sides are going to have score tape everywhere. So I will continue my scoring uh, score tape. all along the sides. So for the inside, I definitely do all around the edges here, but where it's going to attach to my cardstock, I'm a little more frugal. Now I can just easily put some adhesive, a wet adhesive on there. If you know for sure you're going to be covering up your cover with some design paper, um, because I've put the wet adhesive on there before and not covered it with um design paper after I put the cardstock on and you can see where the wet adhesive was. So if you know you're going to put design paper on, you can put wet adhesive. Usually just the score tape where the um, where the cover bends is good enough. And I just make sure to, to attach it really well on the inside. So that's why I have extra score tape here. And then for the cardstock, for, you're going to be bending it over like that and you're going to have to cut off these 
corners here. So I'm going to do that right now. Actually, what I like to do is um, attach it to my cardstock first, and then I trim. I don't know where my head is. And of course, it's not going to come off. Come on. Okay, so now I'm going to line it up as best as possible. Remember, don't be a perfectionist, otherwise, if you're like me, you just won't do anything. <laughs> so I'm just going to burnish it, make sure everything's attached really well. So there we have it. I see I didn't attach it totally, but that's fine because once it gets folded over and gets stuck here, it's held in place. So now I'm just going to cut the corners and just leave just a little bit of a overlap. Because you don't want your chipboard to show through. So just cut off a little bit like that and you can still see that I didn't cover it, um, cut it right up to the chipboard. It's better to be more conservative and cut more later than to go crazy cutting and then you've cut too much off because I've done that too. Okay, so, so start bending it up. And what I like to do is add some score tape just to the outside edges of the cardstock. Yes, you will go through a lot of score tape, even if you're trying to be conservative. But it is good stuff. It's really sticky, really easy to apply. It's not messy. So it's a really nice um, alternative to wet glue. And wet glue works just fine. Okay, so just burnish that so it sticks on real nice. And we'll start taking it all off. So we'll just fold this over. And then for the corner piece, you're just going to want to push that in a little bit. Just fold that down. I haven't perfected the corners yet. And then you have a nice clean corner. So I'll do that again. Make sure all our score tape is off. So right where the chipboard is, you're just going to go and just 
flatten it down, flatten the cardstock down, and then bend it up. I don't know if you can see that. And it just folds over nicely. And I may go back and add some wet glue in there just to hold that little flap down. So again, just press it down and press that side down. That's where when you can take a little bit more off if you were a little too conservative. And there you have your binding for your cover. So I'm gonna cut off just a little bit. Then there. See, this is where my little perfectionist comes in. Just need to stop. Okay, so now you're, if you're like me, you're afraid to bend it. And you don't wanna break your cardstock. So just, just gently ease it, um, bend it just slightly, right where you see a little bend mark, go in there with your bone folder and just help it out a little bit. And then you'll have your cover ready. We have our cover now and we just want to attach our binding to it. So we're just going to add some more of our score tape. Normally I would put some extra wet adhesive where I don't have the score tape, but I don't have my glue close to me, so I'm just going to not do it this time, but it'll be fine. The score tape is nice and strong. So what we're going to do is take off all the score tape. And then we're gonna put it on our cover. I already have the score tape there. It's very sticky. Um, and you just line up your binding so that the pages are evenly spaced on your spine. Top to bottom, left to right. So don't mind my head if it's in the way. That's fine, that's fine. And then go in the, in between the page uh, hinges. Make sure it's nice and stuck. And then find where it bends. to score, kind of burnish, help it bend. For the cover, 
on the other side. Bend it slightly. It's better to go slow and steady than to kind of rush it and tear it. So bend. It's always very satisfying once you get it done and you have a nice beautiful binding for your mini album and you did it all yourself from scratch. So there it is. Okay, so I got my glue, and now to finish off this cover, kind of, um, to show you how it will look, I cut some design paper, and you're just going to glue it in place like that. And I like having my inside covers match. Probably doesn't really matter to most of you, but I don't know. I, I just like the idea of the inside covers being the same. So that's what I've done here, and this is that beautiful Marion Smith um, Romance Novel Chapter 2 paper. Like I said, this is the cover I'm going to use for the album, and so I'm going to use it for my inside and back cover, inside front and back, and just center it. Um, these pieces of paper are six by six, if anyone's curious. And I love my wet glue. To finish my album. So, I want it to match that side, and it goes like this. So, I'm going to center it up. And there you have your album cover almost all the way done. So you have the beautiful inside. You have your hinges for your pages. Um, just finish putting score tape on all the um, hinges. And then you can attach your pages. And I have all my other pages off to the side here. And uh, this is one of them that I showed you guys already when I made my interactive page tutorial. So that one will go on also. We'll pretend it's in the front. And then you have your album. So I hope this got, uh, tutorial was helpful and you use it to make some beautiful mini albums. Thanks for watching everybody. See you again soon. Bye.